So I've mentioned relative and cumulative frequency tables or distributions earlier, but we hadn't talked about what they were. So it's just additional columns or could be in replace of a frequency that tells you additional information about the distribution of data. So the first thing we want to look at is a relative frequency distribution. And this is where you use percent of total in place of the count. So instead of saying that there were, you know, 31 people age 16 to 20, we want to know what percent of the population was age 16 to 20. And so the steps for making the percent here are you take the class frequency and you divide that by the sum of all frequencies, so all the numbers in the list. And if you get a decimal value, we're going to round to the nearest whole percentage number. That's what I suggested, although you want to watch out for that. This might cause the grand total to be 99% or 101%. Remember, with rounding, you get rounding error and you can be off. But if we're rounding to the nearest whole number, which is the nearest ones place, that's where you would be off by one digit in the ones generally. And then a cumulative frequency is a running total where you're kind of adding the frequencies of the classes above it, but you're about to see that performed. So let's go ahead and start with a relative frequency. So first thing I need to do is take the frequency from the first class, which is 31, and I need to divide it by the total. So I just added them up to find out 57 is the total. 31 divided by 57 was 0.5438. So when I turn that into a percentage, I'm looking at 54% as a whole percent, and I'm going to go put that as my first relative frequency. And now I continue that process. The second class had a frequency of 17 divided by 57, gave me a percentage of 30, and that's what I'll fill into the table. And my last class had a frequency of 9 for a grand total of 16%. And in this case, I luck out because it does total 100%. Now I want to find my cumulative frequencies. So what happens is, this is kind of saying if you just had 16 through 20 people, then we know that the total people in the room who are 16 to 20 years old are 31 years old. But now what if I said, you know, raise your hand if you're 16 to 20 and 31 hands went up. But what if I said, now keep your hands up and if you're age 21 to 25, raise your hand. We're going to get some additional hands to go in the air. So that first class had 31 people, the second class had 17 people, so now 48 hands are in the air. So it's almost as if we have this new class that's 16 to 25 instead of 16 to 20, and there are 48 people. And so when you do a cumulative frequency, that means 48 hands would be in the air. Now if I said, if keep your hands in the air, and if you're age 26 to 30, raise your hand, then we know that nine more hands would go in the air for a grand total of 57 hands. Everybody's hands would be in the air. So the cumulative frequency is kind of like a running total. And here off to the far left, I'll show you another way of looking at it. That 31, I'm going to add it to the 17 below and you get 48. That's what goes in my second class. Now I'm going to take the total of 48, add that to 9, and get the 57. That's another way of finding the totals, but this is where I mentioned earlier, be careful because if I was grading your test and this is what your frequency column looked like with this 31 plus and the 48, if I was going to grade that second column, then I would say, well, what is your frequency? Is it 31? Is it 17? Is it 48? So that's why you can do this work off to the side or erase it when you